be. Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. It became flesh and light shined among us, his glory
Good morning, good morning, and congratulations for those New Honor Society members. We're so happy to see each of you this morning. So would you please take your Bibles and uh, please turn to the Gospel of Mark this morning. The Gospel of Mark, uh, Mark chapter 4. If you would please turn there to Mark chapter 4. And would you please stand for the reading of God's Word this morning with me. Mark chapter 4. <clears throat> 
We are looking at verse, uh, verses 35 through 41, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. I will read, uh, I'll read verse 35 and then uh, we'll all read together verse 36. We'll alternate like that right up to verse 41. Okay. <clears throat> Mark chapter 4, verse 35. In the same day, and that little phrase is important to us this morning, in the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side together. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full together. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. I want you to, before we read verse 40, notice that last phrase, and there was a great calm. Together, verse 40, and he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of men is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Would you please be seated? Thank you. We are going to take a few notes, and uh, those of you that are my students, as well as others in other Bible classes, uh, you'll probably be quizzed a little bit later uh, concerning these notes. Uh, but I, I want to uh, just kind of surpass that idea about uh, quiz and so on. And I would like for you to listen to the Holy Spirit this morning. Not necessarily to me, but listen to the voice of the Spirit of God, which I believe is in this room this morning. And the reason I believe he's in this room this morning is because we've asked him to be here. And he said to his word, when two or more are gathered in his name, he's where? He's in the midst of us. I like to, I like to sleep through a good storm. I don't know about you. Uh, that's the best time to sleep. <laughs> when it's pouring out there, not inside, but out. When it's pouring and you hear all those raindrops on the roof. You know, I'll sit down there on my couch, not necessarily on my bed, and I'll sit there and I'll hear that uh, wind howling out there and the rain coming. And uh, first thing you know, Garcia's gone. Boom, I am gone. Taking a nap during a storm. Well, that's what, that's what Jesus did. He took a nap while there, were, there was a horrible storm going on. And, by the way, he was not sitting on a couch. He was not indoor. He was out there on the ship. And this storm came with full force, and he took a nap. Actually, he took that, that opportunity to teach his disciples a very important lesson. And it seems to me that that's what the Lord does in our lives. He allows things to happen to you, things to happen to me, to teach us a very valuable lesson. He's always teaching us something. So this morning, I would like for you to please write this down as the title of my message for the next few moments, Taking a Nap During a Storm. Write that down, would you? Taking a Nap During the Storm. Let's pray and ask God's blessings once again. Father, we, we come to you now and ask in the name of Jesus, that you will bless your word to our hearts. We thank you for the parents that are here. Uh, we thank you, Father, for our student body, for our staff. Speak to us, Lord, only the way you can speak to us, as you have before, as you did last Monday, as you did yesterday in your day, as many went to church, Lord Jesus, and celebrate your glorious resurrection and your soon coming again. Lord, I just pray you'll speak to us this morning. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Would you please look back at verse 35, Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. We have this phrase, the same day. Well, before verse 35 in, in Mark chapter 4, Jesus was talking about the parables of the kingdom. He really emphasized about the word of God, how powerful, how important is the word of God. There's no replacement for this right here. There's no replacement for God's holy word. And Jesus, using the parables of the kingdom, emphasized, he really did, of the importance. But then, not only did he emphasize and, did he, and he taught them about the, the word of God and the, the, the power that the word of God has, but then he, he also tested them as a good teacher. He gave a lesson, or actually lessons, practical lessons, and he said it's test time. And so he tested them. He tested them with this storm that he allowed uh, for them to experience. Uh, listen, uh, it's not always a storm that God uses to test our lives, but he does sometimes. And I'd like you to please write down three things, if you would please right now uh, there in your uh, sermon notebook. Uh, three things that uh, the disciples uh, needed to learn. And Jesus wanted to really uh, impact their lives. And I believe this can also impact our lives. Uh, it's a practical lesson for us today. Number one, Jesus can be trusted in the storms of life. Jesus can be trusted in the storms of life. If there is someone that you can trust while you're going through difficult times right now, right now, there's a, a man right now that uh, his dear mother uh, is dying at Kendall Regional Hospital. She is in critical care. And uh, according to the doctor or according to the nurse in that, uh, in that area, critical care unit, uh, they said to me and they said to uh, Pastor Mortison uh, that we went to visit her, her on Friday night. According to the doctors, she's the most critical patient uh, on that floor. And uh, she's struggling. And they're trying to do all they can to uh, kind of help her out to have the surgery to save her life. Her son was there. Uh, her son, uh, a man of construction. I mean, what I mean by that is he worked in construction all his life, so he's not a, a weakling, phys a physical weakling. He's a strong man. Um, and uh, uh, he's always uh, working with his hands. And uh, he's kind of, kind of like a, not a tough character, but he's tough in personality. And uh, he was in his room, and as we were about to leave, after we prayed, he leaned forward, and he started to cry like a child. Here's a man that's strong, big, has worked in, with his hands all of his life in construction, handle all these uh, different uh, machineries out there and uh, he's, he stops and he starts to cry and then he looks at me and he says I know that God will never give you more than what you can bear I know but then he said to me and he looks up and he's just bawling and it's just it is his mother behind him it is his mother that he loves with all his heart it is his mother whom he's so close to and he looks back a little bit like this and he looks at me and he goes but I don't know if I can bear this. Now, you and I may, may go through a situation like that in life. I don't mean now necessarily, but we may. I'd like you to please remember one thing, if you're able to remember this. Number one, Jesus can be trusted in the storms of life. If there is someone that you can trust at that moment, it's Jesus Christ. Yes, the pastor can help you. Other pastors of the church can help you. The deacons of the church can help you. Your Sunday school teacher can help you. Your Bible teacher from your school can help you. Even probably your best friend who knows them, that, they, that may know the Lord and know His Word, they may be able to encourage you and help you, but nowhere near how the Lord Jesus Christ can truly help you. Number two, not only number one, that 
a lesson that they needed to learn. But number two, many people have the idea, listen, many people have the idea that storms come to their lives only when they have disobeyed God. That these storms come to their lives when, when the, only when they disobeyed the Lord. So I must be in disobedience to Him. I must not be walking close to Him. He's allowing this horrible moment in my life. I'm going through a difficult time. Lord, I, I, it must be that I have sinned against you. Not necessarily. Because number three, please put this down. The disciples got into a storm because of their obedience to the Lord. They got into, their, into the storm because of their obedience to the Lord. Jesus said, let's get on the ship. Jesus said, let us go on to the other side. He didn't say, let's walk around. He did not say, uh, you boys, if you want to go on the ship, that's up to you. Just be careful. He didn't say that. He said, let us go. Let's do it. Just because you are in the center of God's will, just because you are obeying the Lord, does not mean that you will not experience a storm in your life. You may, even though you're obeying the Lord. But the Lord Jesus knew about this storm? Of course He did. It was part of the schedule for that day. The Lord wanted to test His disciples. And sometimes... Not all the time, please understand that. But sometimes he allows storms in your life and in my life to test our faith. How much faith do you have? We talk about faith. We sing about faith. We brag about faith. We hear others talk about faith. Faith, 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 faith. And we even say, oh, you've got to have faith in God. Come on, brother. Come on, sister, you've got to have faith. Where's your faith? And God says, okay, where's your faith? And so God allows sometimes these storms to prove our faith to Him. I'd like you to please also write three things here. Three things that uh, Jesus taught His disciples. We, we talked about three things that uh, uh, they uh, experienced, but... Uh, three things that he taught his disciples. Here are three things. Number one, they had his promise that they were going to the other side. They had his promise that they were going to the other side. Look at verse 35 again. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And that same day, as I saw to preach all those parables of the kingdom, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over Unto the other side. He promised them. Hey we're going to go over there. He didn't promise an easy trip. But he promised. That he was going to take them. To the other side. Jesus does not promise an easy life. There's no way. I physically. I have not had a, uh, an easy life. And I'm not sure if it's over or not. But when I, was, uh, when I was born, I was born with a major heart problem. And so the doctor told my mom, he's not going to make it. If he makes it to be 11 years old, it will be a miracle from God Almighty. And, uh, and miracles do happen. Uh, they, they told my, my parents he needs a... Desperately, he needs an open heart surgery, and the type of surgery, open heart surgery that he needs uh, here in Cuba, uh, we, can't, we can't do it. So he's got to go to the States. He's got to go to uh, good old USA if he has a shot. And so my parents gave it all, turned it all to the uh, Castro regime. Turned it all over and said, well, let's go then and, and save our son's life. And so they turned everything off, money, land, houses, the whole works. And uh, they came to this beautiful country. And here, uh, on November 12th, 1965, I had open heart surgery. I remember, I remember looking out the window the day before the surgery, and I saw three kids flying a kite. I had never been able to run by then, from that moment. Not even walk fast. 
Uh, even though I was uh, seven years old, my dad had to carry me to school. How embarrassing. Everyone was in recess having a great time, uh, but not me. I had to stay and watch other kids have a great time in sports and so, that and so on up to that moment. But let me tell you something right now. By the grace of God, I had the surgery. And by the grace of God, the surgery was a success. What I'm trying to tell you is this. Sometimes we think, well, this guy has it easy. This lady has it easy. They have it easy. No one has it easy. All of us here, if we have not, we will be tested. We will go through some difficult moments in our lives, emotionally, physically, sometimes spiritually. But I want you to know one thing, that he promises that we are going to the other side. That if you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can rest assured that as you are absent from your body, you'll be present with the Lord. And in John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3, Jesus made this promise. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mentions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. If he says... I will see you on the other side. You can rest assured that that's going to happen. They had his promise that they were going to the other side. But number two, put this down, please. The Lord himself was with them. So what was there to fear? The Lord himself was with them. So what was there to fear? Can you imagine that little boat disappearing among the waves, the water coming in, the wind tossing that little ship, lightning, and then to hear the thunder. It was a horrible situation. And through all that, Jesus was not up there saying, Hey, pick that up. Hey, duck your head. Hey, hang on to this. No, Jesus was just, I don't know if he was snoring, but he was sleeping. Comfortably. Like nothing was going on. But folks, the, the disciples were, they were scared. But can you imagine God was there? How in the world would you be scared of anything when God is there? They were. They were scared. You see, let me tell you something right now. God is here. God is with you when you go through your, your storm. Let it be a small storm or a very difficult storm. God is, listen, God is with you. And here's what we have to learn from this point. If God was with me yesterday, he'll be with me today. And he'll be with me tomorrow. I can trust, I can trust him because if he took care of me of yesterday, he will take care of me today and will take care of me tomorrow. I'd like you to please write this down, number three. One more point. They could see that Jesus was perfectly at peace even in the midst of of the storm. They could see that Jesus was perfectly at peace, even in the midst of the storm. They could have been encouraged, and they were encouraged after a while, seeing that the Lord is fine. If the Lord is fine, then we can be fine. You know, the Lord always, the Lord always gave us His example. And He led not by word, He led by His actions. And that's why Jesus said later on, Oh, ye men of little faith, where did, you, where did you go wrong? They could have seen him that he was fine, and you and I and they that would also be fine. In Psalms chapter 46, if you please turn there in your Bibles, I'd like to wrap up the message this morning with this verse. In Psalms 46, in Psalms 46 and verse 10, the psalmist writes, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Notice that first part of the sentence. Be still and know that I am God. 
Now, I don't believe in coincidence. And let me finish by saying this, because there's no such thing as coincidence. Everything happens for a reason. Students, listen carefully, and faculty and, and parents. For you to be here this morning and for me to preach this message to you was not because, uh, I don't know what else to preach, I guess I'll preach that, no. It was not because, uh, well, I guess I didn't have nowhere else to go, I might as well be here, no. God put you here. He had you listen to this message. And he had me preach this message for a reason. I do not know your personal life. I don't even know if you're going through a storm or you're about to go through a storm. I know one thing from his word, that when it happens, you can be still and know that he is God. He's going to be there for you. He's going to see you through it. He promises in his word. Please bow your head and every head bow and eye close as we're dismissed in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing me to preach your precious word once again. Thank you for our parents that are here. Uh, thank you, Father, for those who were inducted in the uh, honor society. Thank you. What a privilege, what a blessing. Those that were honored already and those that were new. Uh, Father, what an encouragement to the rest of the student body. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our student body, for our staff. They're, they're great. They're the best. We've been blessed to have them. Lord, I pray that you'll bless your word uh, to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.